Oh, well, should I apologize to your parents? Did you burn down anything expensive? Ah, <laughs> uh, maybe. Oh, you did! <laughs> yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. Well, a few months ago, Adam Savage made one of those aluminum foil balls and couldn't get it cut open. So I left a comment. Okay, fine. We'll gladly cut it in half for you. And that got... Two likes. So I forgot about it. Then out of nowhere, we got an email saying they got a bunch of comments telling them to send it to us for cutting. I thought I was dreaming. The Adam Savage legendary buster of myths. So here we are a few months later to cut the foil ball for him and another special request. Something he's always wanted to see cut in half. But we'll get to that. First, we'll cut the ball. There's a Sharpie line on there. I'm assuming that's where he wants us to cut it. Yeah. So we're going to... Oh, we've... Uh... We've got one shot at this. So let's not screw this one up. <laughs> yeah, that would be very sad. Adam would be furious. Heartbroken. And heartbroken. Absolutely. Should be good enough. All right, time for the big reveal. Three, two, one. Ooh, interesting. Oh, Adam did a good job of making that that's pretty dense, actually. Then it was time for our FaceTime. We were giddy as two schoolgirls. Really nice to meet you guys. I'm a fan of your work. Uh, I really appreciate you helping us out with the tinfoil ball. That was just a stellar, a stellar viewpoint on that project. Awesome. I'm glad we had value <laughs> to give to you. Uh, dude, I mean, look, my whole life has been spent um, enjoying a peek behind the curtain, right? Whether it was special effects or Mythbusters, like I just love being able to understand the internal structure of things. And this is what you do all, all day long <laughs> is you slice through and see the internal structure. It's really thrilling. Yeah, it's, it's a joy. <laughs> We're grateful. <laughs> <laughs> the machine is a marvel, so it's great. <laughs> How, how thick can you guys cut through? Yeah, about eight inches is as high as it goes, but we can like... You can submerge it into the jet and then cut about as thick as anything can go, so... <laughs> crazy. That's crazy. Um, have, you ever, have you had anything ever go super spectacularly wrong, like spraying water all over the shop? Oh, we tried to t cut tungsten carbide one time. And it and was, still go? Yeah, like it... If we just sat there for an hour, maybe, but like it was spraying water everywhere, we didn't want to. Oh, have you ever tried a meteorite? Yes. Do I have it sitting here? I love this. <laughs> we do. It's right here. Oh, dude. <laughs> Amazing. Because we, we cut one on Savage Builds. We cut through one with an industrial bandsaw, and it took like an hour and a half to get through three inches of meteorite. Yeah, it's... It's amazing what it can do. So I have here a package from you guys that I have not yet opened. We have here a relic from the golden age, a BW pourable television. Now this is what an unboxing from the 80s looks like. All right, here it is. Ooh, that's, that's a good size. Good for being portable, take it to the port. Comes with a charger and a car adapter because you never know when you'll need to watch TV on the go, you know? 1986, that's kind of bonkers. Let's plug this bad boy in and see if it works. Look at this feature. This handle also turns the on switch if you move it. You gotta get it right. Maybe not. It's not plugged in. <laughs> that, that might be working. <laughs> Uh, all right, we just gotta find the right, the right channel here. Oh, there it is. Oh, we just gotta adjust the contrast a little bit. That was our problem. It's looking much better. Oh, yeah? Are we gonna pitch it? Oh, there it is. Oh, no. It says, do not open. Adam's gonna be real sad when we tell him we can't open this. I guess that's the end of the video. Oh, yeah, it doesn't have to open it. No wonder we weren't getting any signal. We don't have the antenna attached. So we want to have it on. So we've got it in the surge protector to protect us from a surge. This surge protector will protect me from harm. <laughs> this tattoo will protect me from harm. <laughs> For those of you who are new here, this pump gets the water pressure up to 60,000 PSI, runs it along this tube 
carries it down to the head. This hopper is full of garnet and its purpose is to be abrasive, just like my mother-in-law. The abrasive travels through the tubes, comes down through here and is added to the water right before it goes through the nozzle made of tungsten carbide so it doesn't erode as quickly. And that's what makes it able to cut almost anything. I take back what I said about my mother-in-law. Um, I'm actually not married. Oh, that is uh, a strange smell. I think it's the smell of burning electronics. Ooh, interesting. We seem to have dissolved the cathode ray tube. I'm sure Adam was hoping to get a good look at that, so that's unfortunate. From my understanding, it creates a tiny image here and projects it this way and expands it into this screen here. Got a little speaker down in there on this side. I'm gonna guess those are capacitors, these little blue guys. A little something there, don't know what that is. So after a quick internet search, it looks like this is an electromagnet. So these deflect the electron beam and make it travel, instead of in a straight line, they make it curve outwards to the edges of the screen to give you a nice image. We can thank our boy Philo T for that. Piece of metal wedged in between. I'll tell you what though, it's a good thing we left this screen protector on because we wouldn't want our screen to be scratched up. Look at that, good as new. Not a scratch on there. Here we go. Headed your way, Adam. So I have here a package from you guys that I have not yet opened. Oh. Uh, I yeah, no, this is, we're doing this live. <laughs> okay, I'm excited. This is, this is falls into the kids these days objects, right? Cause we look at everything on these and nobody has any idea that we used to watch all of our media on linear accelerators. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. All right. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is, all this hilarious like garnet dust in here, which I believe is from your machine, yeah? Yes, we're trying to get rid of it. Oh, <laughs> yeah, look at this. Oh man, this is one half of the vacuum tube of a CRT television. This is great. Um, I see that it had some real trouble with the glass. Yeah, it, as it spreads out the cone of water, it reduces quality a lot. Totally. This is, oh, oh yeah, oh man. So, just so everyone is really clear, when Philo Farnsworth first invented the television, he knew that he needed a vacuum tube in order to fire his electron beam at the phosphor coating on the inside, but he didn't know how to blow glass. So his brother taught himself glass blowing here in Berkeley, California, to build the very first television screen. And on the back is this coil, which helps deliver the electron beam to the to the phosphorus surface. And when you cut through the coil, yeah, all hell broke loose. <laughs> yeah, it uh, had a tough time. <laughs> but this is like, this is how I was watching all my media until, when did the first flat screens come out? Like in the early aughts, right? Give or take, yeah. I mean, oh right, I had a DLP. I had a, 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 a you know, a thin projection television, but like, this was it forever until really quite recently. Dude, I cannot believe that we all enjoyed so much media on the inside of a friggin' light bulb. <laughs> yeah. It seems so primitive now. Also, by the way, everyone should know that if you take apart old CRTs, which you shouldn't do because they actually have a lot of capacitance and often frequently have a real electrical charge. And I have gotten a very heavy duty wake up shock uh, way in my early 20s when I was taking apart a lot of televisions. We, um, we actually had it turned on when we got it. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, I cannot wait to see. So you started cutting it while it was on? Uh-huh. <laughs> That's badass. It is interesting. We entered from the back and I think it yeah. was turning off the certain parts 
of the cathode. So part of it went black. Part of the screen went black, but part of it was still illuminated. No way! It was still like coughing up blood, but still trying to make an image. <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> so what, what image, did you have a specific image on here or were you just tuned to television? Just static. We looked through the channels and couldn't find anything. <laughs> yeah, there probably isn't anything. When I was a kid, it was like three channels and then all the weird crap on the UHF band. Dudes, this is amazing. I can't thank you enough for, so I, I'm gonna mount this back in here and I'll send this back to you because you should have this on your wall. Oh, thank you, that's awesome. That'd be great. <laughs> I have always wanted to see the inside of this. This is brilliant. Well, dudes, Dan, thank you so much, man. This is thrilling. I, I, I very much enjoyed this collaboration we've been doing. Me too, it's, it, I had a weird experience. I walked out of the gym the other day and it was raining and I thought, oh, I should run to my car. <laughs> And I thought, oh, I'll get more wet than if I walk. I was like, that's <laughs> insane that I'm about to talk to Adam Savage. It's a dream come true to talk to you, so. Oh, well, do, should I apologize to your parents? Did you burn down anything expensive? Ah, <laughs> uh, maybe. Oh, you did! <laughs> <laughs> I can tell from that. Hey, if you'd like to see my reaction to the water jet guys cutting through the foil ball that I made, well, you can head right over to Tested, our channel, and check it out. A link is in the description below.